Here in Nigeria, about 60 members of the House of Representatives are currently seeking an amendment to the 1999 Constitution to transition from the current presidential system to the parliamentary system of government. The lawmakers identified the need for reducing the cost of governance, better representation of the people, and robust policy debates, among others, as some of the reasons for demanding a return to the parliamentary system. The lawmakers, drawn from different party affiliations, are optimistic that when passed, will significantly impact on the national political landscape tremendously. Despite several alterations to the Constitution to address the shortcomings of a system that has denied the nation the opportunity of attaining its full potentials, among these imperfections, at the high cost of governance, leaving fewer resources for crucial areas like infrastructure, education, and healthcare, and consequently hindering the nation's development progress. And the excessive powers vested in members of the executive who are appointees and not directly accountable to the people. The bills that were presented today for the first reading seek a return to the system of government adopted by our fathers which made governments, governance accountable, responsible, and responsive. We expect that the process may not necessarily terminate with the current administration. In natural fact, it's, we expect that it will, it, it will even go beyond 2027. But what is important is that we have set the ball rolling. And, uh, uh -huh. so, it may go as far, the actual commencement may even be uh, 2031. I mean, Joining us now is Osita Okechuku, former Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Okechuku, and welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Sister Ayo. Good morning, Dr. Ruby. Good morning, Saisi Rufai. Morning, sir. And your viewers worldwide. Okay, yeah, Mr. Kechuku, so many uh, issues on the table. I know how you have introduced the uh, choice between parliamentary system of government and presidential system of government. But I saw uh, a message from you uh, on the issue of state police, and I would like to start with that, because what you are recommending, I need clarification on it. You are recommending that we uh, activate section 105 to 109 of the Nigerian police uh, act uh, to introduce what you call special constabulary police. And I'm worried about that because special constabulary police was actually a colonial invention from about 1820, you know, when the uh, colonial overlords established uh, police. We had the Hausa constabulary, you know, at a point, I think that was about 1878. Then we had the Lagos police in 1888. Uh, then we had the uh, uh, the uh, Niger Delta, you know, uh, constabulary, and then later we had the Royal Niger Constabulary, all used by the, uh, you know, colonial masters to brutalize the, uh, the natives, as they call them, uh, <coughs> and to impose their will. And then, of course, later on, we had the Nigerian police emerging with the major, uh, with a major of, uh, you know, these constabularies, and then calling the, the uh, Nigeria police uh, force. So are you suggesting that we return to the colonial origins of the Nigerian police and, uh, you know, have a police that in theory and in practice will be further oppressing the Nigerian people? Since you say the governors, if we give them state police, they will abuse it. I thought that was what I read in the message you sent to me. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ruby. My canvas is simply a migration from special constabulary to state police. Migration, a progressive one. One, because there is a paradox on the ground, as you well stated. There's public, intense public paranoia against the Nigerian police force that failed to secure us, on one hand. On the other hand, 
is also intense public paranoia against the state governors, our dear governors, who have scant regard for the rule of law, who had failed to even obey the 1999 Constitution as amended when the 80th National Assembly under distinguished senator Bukola Seraki and President Buhari amended that same constitution and said there should be first line charge of funding to state judiciary and the state legislature. The governors running around bipartisan, even my own great party, the APC. They went to the Supreme Court and challenged it. Never implemented it. In that same bill was the autonomy for local government. About 23 states of the Federation uh, State Assemblies voted against it. That today, majority of our local councils are in breach of Section 7 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which in simplicity means there is no democracy at that level. And if, if you do a careful study of what they call the state INEC across the board, it's very few. I think it was uh, Malame Rufai's Kaduna, where the opposition got more, uh, few seats. In my state in Enugu, they conducted over four local council elections. The opposition never got one out of the 260 local councils. And it's the same applicable in majority of the states of the country. So that paranoia <coughs> is where I benched my canvas. That our governors are akin to emperors. They do not obey the rule of law. They don't know about the Constitution. They are not transparent. And even some of them have no fund to manage a state police. So why don't we allow them to collaborate to the Nigerian police force and recruit the constabulary? You can recruit 2,000, depending on your state, 3,000, 4,000. But it's managed in collaboration. And then we can also look into the rejigging of the Nigerian police force, because he's also a fall guy in what we are saying. And we should also plead to whoever becomes president that please, when you want to nominate an inspector general of police, DIGs, do a careful examination of the files. I'm not talking of the present IG. But I'm talking subsequently that if Osito Kechuku becomes president tomorrow, my kinsmen will rally around me. I said, an Igbo must be IG. When you do so, you demoralize the officers and men in the camp. You have failed to choose the best out of the file, which should guide us. So we need to reject the police force, but it's still at the same time for us to work on a gradual progression, as stipulated in, if you go through that section 105-109 of the Police Act of 2020, a lot of people have not taken time to go through it, is a silver bullet that kills two birds with one stone. It gives leverage to state governors and the local group to manage the constabulary with the, with the police, Nigerian police force. Right. Without leaving the police in their hand. If you do so, then it's goodbye to Nigerian democracy. Okay. That is my fear. Okay. I'm not oh. saying that the Nigerian police force has done so well, no. But I, I also know that if the National Assembly 
and Mr. President looks into how to reject the police force. I had a case man that was kidnapped in, on September All right. 2023. All right, Mr. Kechuku, I, I'd like to call We have been here. looking for him. Mr. Kechuku. Do you know, the, do you know that, that we are using private tracker All right. to look for the kidnappers? All right. Because some of the, the equipment in the police force have, have broken down. All right, I hear you, Mr. Okechuku, and there's so, so many. It's a debate that will definitely um, go on for a, for a while. The president is also having that conversation with the state governors, and it looks like there's some form of alignment there with regards to the proposal for state police. I hear you, but I'd like to come back to that conversation around the um, 60 reps who are um, who have proposed for a return to parliamentary system of government. It's igniting a conversation around the system that's currently in operation in Nigeria. Is it working? Um, is, it, is federalism working or should we go back to a parliamentary system of government? There have been many arguments, you know, back and forth. What's your take on this very quickly because of our time? Okay, my sister, before I come to that, the decision that is going for the pol state police is political grievance decision. On parliamentary, it is a political grievance. Parliamentary election by origin. Sometimes in the 11th century or so, started in California, in what is called a, a Barcelona today, Catalonia region in Spain. Secondly, in Kiev, in fact, some people have argued in, in Athens, before it came to UK, it was a parliamentary assemblage. If you want to reduce the cost of governance, you can reduce that under presidential system. You just take the National Assembly to present a bill to Mr. President that given the situation we find ourselves, where it's becoming difficult for the poor workers and average Nigerian to find something to eat, we think that our emolument and salary is so high. We are cutting it. Mr. President was advising the executive should also cut theirs. That's what they owe the country. Not the system of governance. If you have parliamentary system, it can also be by camera. It can be unicamera. And if you are saying in 2030, please, we are saying that today Nigeria is in dire straits, that will call on the National Assembly instead of postponing the day of change of system of government to buckle up the political will to reduce. The budget of the National Assembly, the budget of the, of the executive, if you do so, the Nigerian state will queue in. Because the example must come from the center and go down the line. But if you are working in a system where the governors are not accountable, where the local councils are not accountable, even as much as the center. And you are thinking that it's the system of governance okay. that is the problem. I don't okay. think so. OK. Uh, so you've talked about uh, this parliamentary system. Remember the good old days of the parliamentary system in Nigeria and all of that. But one other part of the conversation i like to bring to the fore is, is it a need for parliamentary system or full restructuring that we need in the country? The fact that one part, the center, still holds sway rather than <laughs> us having different parts, you know, being able to grow at their own pace, just like we had the Western region and other regions in the 60s, you know, which some people say did not harmonize unity. And would you favor a method where, like the 63 Constitution was talking about, that we should have states or regions that have mineral resources pay a certain percentage of what they get to the federal post rather than the government controls everything and have this quota sharing system where you know they share through FAC and all of that. Shouldn't that be that about the conversation? Because let's not also forget the parliamentary system we all looked at as good old days had a lot of corruption. We all remember a famous minister of finance and corrupt activities in this country. I was under a parliamentary system. So it has its own problems too, if not properly managed.
Uh, thank you, Rufai. We are still on the same bend, on the same bind. Because of the hardship in the country, because of the help helplessness, the metastasis of grief, we are trying to look backwards. That's not the issue. The issue I told some of my governor friends, I asked some of them, how much do you get a month? They will tell you. I said, okay, how much is salary? They will tell you. I said, are you calling one billion naira a small money? The issue is that we are not prudently managing the funds that come especially to the local council at the state level. It is not about restructuring. Are we going to throw away those people who have corrupted the system? If we restructure and say that the Southeast, for instance, should become a region, what will happen to those who, have, who could not manage the affairs of their state today? Are they not going to be part of the, 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 the commune of the restructured region? So let us come alive. We should come alive. That was part of the problem we had in, the, uh, in my, we we'll keep on telling President Buhari. We said part of what the support we gave you was that if you hear that Osito Kechuku stole a cobble, Osito Kechuku will be in jail the next day. Well, we didn't meet up with that. We still have time for us to come to that. Let us look into how to energize Oluka Ede and others that are managing the anti-corruption agencies and it, leave them to move. If they yeah. could move with veracity, we don't need any restructure. We can fix the country. Okay, Mr. Kechuku. Well, I mean, we seem to be running out of time, but those who are calling for restructuring are saying, look, we can't reorganize this country on an ad hoc basis. And restructuring was one of the major pillars of campaign for your party. A committee was even set up to look into it. And now I'm surprised that an APC chieftain will say, well, we don't need the restructuring. You know, the people calling for restructuring are calling for a far more comprehensive thing, whether it's system of government or it is state police. This system of government, who is going to run this, the, the parliamentary system? These same people? Who, who are, you know, uh, running big government? Where would the Nigerians who will run that new system come from? So it's also about our attitude to governance, whether parliamentary or presidential. But thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show.